Hi, welcome to part 158. If you have not yet subscribed, do so. And you can join and become a member to gain access to wide variety of contents around these certifications. So this is a new question. How does cloud computing help reduce business costs? The first one says that the prices are the same in every region, which is not true. The prices are not the same in every region. Uh, in India, if your data center, if your AWS data center is in India, recently they opened in Hyderabad. So Indian data centers will be cheaper. Why? Obviously, because the labor cost and cost of the setup of data centers and maintaining the data centers is cheap compared to uh, compared to USA or in Europe, etc. So that's why this statement is not true. The prices are not the same. It will fluctuate depending upon uh, whether the data centers are in developed countries or developing countries. Uh, by the way, does AWS has, has, do they have data centers in Israel? Uh, you can search and let us know in the comment. Option B suggests that AWS enables capacity to be adjusted on demand. Yes, you can demand. You can adjust the capacity on demand. For example, on EC2 instances, you have a feature called auto scaling where if you are hosting an application, a web application on EC2 instances, suppose you had four instances to start with and the number of concurrent users increases, then you can add four more instances 10 more instances 20 more instances to manage that so this statement is purely perfectly true now c says that aws offers discounts on ec2 instances that remain idle for more than one week that is not true okay see aws is there to do business if you kept it idle for one week for example you kept your fan uh, the switch on for one week and went out on vacation will your electricity board say hey you know i i do understand you were on vacation so i will not charge you for this one week of usage of fan no boss if you are an asshole you will have to pay for it option d suggests that AWS does not charge for data sent from AWS cloud to the internet. See, anything that goes out, goes out of AWS is not free. Whether it may go to internet, it may go to your on-premises, it is not free. Any data that comes inside that, that is inward movement towards AWS, that is free anything which is going out is not free it makes sense right aws wants all the people to use its services bring their data so it will not charge because they are not stupid what if they are so stupid and they say if you are bringing the data to us i will charge for that also and i will make money by you know you guys using it no they are not so stupid E, we are left with one option now and we have to choose two answers. We only chose one answer. So AWS eliminates many of the costs of building and maintaining on-premises. Yes. See, when you come to AWS, any cloud, it may be Azure, Google, they already have data center. So you don't have to purchase any hardware or provision the data center it is all available for you so this statement is true so options b and e these are good to go see in this next question you want to store database credentials and you where you want to store see you can put the username and password in a notepad will that be a good solution you can put it in a notepad and keep it in S3. Will that be a good solution, boss? Think about it. Will that be a good solution? It will be 
a bad solution because anybody can open the notepad see your passwords so it is as it is like you put someone without clothes so anybody can view it that is wrong consider your password as very secret thing you should not do a public display of your password so aws tells you first i have given you secrets manager put all your secrets there password is a secret credential is a credential is a secret see i am is about giving access to a service and etc and kms is about encryption keys to encrypt the data encryption at rest encryption in transit encryption at rest kms is used okay encryption in transit certificates are used certificate manager is used now s3 we will not use s3 here because secrets manager is far better far better so option b secrets manager is our final answer so you are, what cloud service will you use to alert the customers if customer spending thresholds are exceeded that means you decided okay i will run my home in using 5000 dollars per month but on 25th of october uh you see that okay i have already spent 4800 dollars that means you are going to overshoot your budget what service will help you with that okay so budget is with that is a service budget see cost explorer will tell you that you have spent 5 dollars on this expense or you have spent 200 dollars on utilities you have spent 500 dollars on food that break up you will get in cost explorer and cost explorer also has tags it will tell you that okay this tag was for utilities and this tag was for groceries and organization is about centrally you know managing certain stuff it is not about um you know sending your alerts that saying that boss whatever budget you decided no you are going to exceed it boss so that at your home who tells you that your whatever budget you have fixed it is going to exceed will your wife tell you no your wife will not tell you in fact she will come on 25th also and tell you to spend more okay your kids will also not tell because they will they are very innocent they don't even know how the world runs that's a day if they feel they want chocolates or toys and etc they instead they will put an demand that i want this toy that toy so you only have to have some utility software etc to tell you that boss you are overspending please control in aws world aws budget will tell you boss don't overspend see cloud if you if clients go on cloud world totally you know uh, their clothes will be ripped off if they stay in cloud for 5 years uh, they will mostly become bankrupt if they put all their services in cloud it is so expensive you you feel yeah, okay this is just 2 cents per minute etc but calculate the cost for 5 years then you will come to know that uh, it becomes more costly than actually buying a hardware and putting an and setting up a data center okay so that is why people now are saying i will go hybrid cloud i will put only a few applications on cloud but i'll have good amount of applications which is processing very huge amount of data and those things i will have it in my data center or on premises if you have not yet subscribed you can do so and become a member you will gain access to so many great content there are a lot of questions there and uh, these are all practice questions um, a lot of people say that they got very similar questions in the certification but then these are practice questions it will help you sharpen your skills it will help you with understanding how to attack the problem of and how to use your concepts to weed out the wrong options so this brings us to the end of part 158 we will post more videos 
the next two or three videos will be for members only not for subscribers it will be for members only so uh, stay tuned